My name is Christian von Königsegg. I'm 40 years old and for half of my life I've been on the quest to be a leader in the hypercar industry, utilizing Swedish design combined with visionary technical solutions. So this is the world's first top-mounted active rear wing ever made, as far as we are aware. Uh, the reason why it's top-mounted is because the most important part of the wing is the underside to create downforce. It's like an upside-down aeroplane wing where the top side is the most important. Um, so traditional wings are mounted from underneath, which is the simplest solution. But then you actually take away an important area for downforce creation more important than the top side. So if you look at modern Le Mans cars, they usually have pylons sitting in front of the wing, going up and then down, holding the wing from the top. But the difference between that and our solution is that they have the, the uh, wing mount just in front of the trailing edge, causing still quite a lot of turbulence behind uh, the mount, even though it's top mounted. So we kind of came up with this idea to mount it in front of the wing and tapering it up so there is no turbulence creating uh, mount just in front of the wing. So not only is it top mounted, not only is it active, it's also more front mounted than top mounted. Another side effect of these strakes, as we call them, is that they actually stabilize the car at high speed as, as well. They become like rudders and uh, they don't increase the frontal area compared to normal traditional mounts. So it, it's, it's basically only positive uh, uh, side effects of having this design compared to traditional solutions. So high speed stability, less turbulence in front of the wing, no mount under the wing, top mounting and, and active mounting. Uh, the total uh, uh, weight of this system is nine to around nine to 10 kilos, which is about a third of the weight we've heard of other active rear wings that our competitors use. So it's really, really lightweight. It's all carbon fiber. The, even the rod going from the actuator here uh, at the back of the bulkhead is uh, hollow carbon fiber. It's actually, this logo here is a mount with two rubber rollers to stabilize this thin and lightweight rod. So it works, uh, uh, has a good longevity and stability. So it's a kind of an interesting system we came up with, I think. So we're going to demonstrate a little bit and test run the wing function. So this is uh, right now a setting for high speed. Uh, this setting has been simulated up to around 450 kilometers per hour. It's minimum drag, minimum downforce, just to make it as slippery as possible. Um, and then we can go into full brake mode, uh, which is, let's see, this setting. So this setting is actually giving the maximum amount of uh, drag in combination with not stalling the wing fully, so we get a super high downforce on the rear wheels for braking as well. So it's not only an aero brake, that's part of the functionality putting it in this position. It's also maximizing the amount of downforce at the same time. And it's the only aero brake wing working in that way. And the reason why we can do it is because it has such a nice configuration with a twin, uh, with a double wing. Uh, so they're helping each other. So you can have it at a higher degree without stalling it fully. It's semi stalled, but it's still giving a ton of downforce and a ton of uh, drag at the same time. I'm very excited by it and it's kind of, I, I've seen the car as a whole on computer renderings and on the computer screen and so on. And it looks kind of massive when you see it that way, especially this area, it looks huge. But when you see, I saw the car on the ground for the first time two days ago with the wing on it. And for some reason, it looks like the smallest car we've ever made because the car set into proportion to this big wing makes it shrink into a more realistic size that it is. When we've had smaller wings on the cars and and we've had uh, smaller attributes and, and smaller winglets on the front, the car looks actually bigger. So it's kind of a shrinking dynamic effect uh, to the look when, when I see it in reality. Um, as the chassis is active and the aerodynamics are active, we don't want to differentiate between the two. Uh, it can be like 
set up for perfect handling on a flat road course, like a go-kart setup, very stiff springs, uh, very stiff shock absorbers, uh, high degree of downforce, uh, stiff dampening, or for the Nürnberg ring where we race it a little bit uh, and soften up the suspension and the spring settings. Uh, so it, I don't really want to differentiate it from being a mechanical grip car and aero grip car. They work together. Uh, traditionally, we started out with fairly low amount of, uh, of downforce on our car, so we had to work really hard on the mechanical grip. We still maintain that knowledge and technology and enha have enhanced it, combine it with the latest uh, Michelin Cup 2 tires and super efficient downforce aerodynamics and lightening the car at the same time, making it more powerful at the same time. So it's kind of racing the bar in all different directions. So it's going to be a blast to drive.